find you struggle painting mountains realistically? Well, in today's video, we're going to show you the most incredibly simple technique that makes this remarkably easy. Coming up. Hi again there guys, Emma here from Paint and Pino giving you some top tips for all things art and design and in today's video we're going to show you what I think is possibly the easiest way to paint mountains on YouTube today and I mean that because I've searched for hours trying to find some really simple techniques and nothing has come up that's quite as simple as this and I'll be honest it was an accident all right so most things in art or the best things in art tend to be accidents so i was actually doing a video recently where i was doing this underwater scene and as i was trying to do some of the uh, the detail the paint was too wet so as i decided to remove it with the palette knife that's when the idea came that this would be a really simple way of painting mountains so today guys i'm going to show you a step-by-step -step guide on how just a simple palette knife can create a really really simple but effective mountainscape. Here we go. So we're simply just going with two colors. Basically I've got the white and I've also got the cool and the warmer blue. And then we're just going with a larger brush with a couple of different size palette knives just to give us a little bit more detail when we come to removing the paint. So I'm gonna put the paint on pretty loosely. It's already been pre-primed. Anyone that watches my paintings will know that I always like to prime my paintings quite thickly. Um, it's always helpful when you're particularly blending paint through if you've got a wet primed background. So here I'm just putting a combination of the cool and the, uh, the warm blue and just mixing them through. The key always um, when you are blending colours like this is to try and keep that straight wrist so you don't get those rainbow bends when you're trying to blend your colours together. So I'm working pretty quickly here just trying to get those colours onto the canvas so that they don't dry. Obviously the whole point of this is that, uh, you know, we, we need to be able to remove the paint. So the actual primer in the background, the white as it were, has actually dried already. So that when I'm removing the blue in a moment, you'll be able to see that white coming through. So I'm just gonna have a bit more tone at the top, just make it a little bit cooler. So just mixing in some white acrylic. Just give a bit more contrast. Again, keeping those straight wrists. Do the same at the bottom. As with any blending, if you can work quickly, it's so much easier because the paint's already wet. So obviously you're gonna be able to blend those colors through. I'm just gonna to touch up the middle. That's the focus area that I'm gonna be working on in a moment. So we do want to make sure that the pigment is pretty wet. This is where the fun really begins. So we're just gonna to start to remove the blue. Almost just scraping it off to reveal that white underneath. Make sure you're removing the excess. I'm just making the mountains up here, I'm just giving some nice jagged edges, not worrying about too much about where I take the palette knife. Keep wiping off that excess paint. And you do have to work quite quickly with this technique because obviously as the paint starts to dry it becomes a little bit more difficult and it's really important you keep removing that excess. You'll see there I just put some of the blue through. Um, but you know we, we're not completely clearing the paint. We don't want it to just be a white block mountain. We want to have some contrast. So if you've got some of those blue areas that's, that's fine. It actually works really quite beautifully. So just putting some slope edged and then I want to make sure I've got a definition of where mountain range is going to hit the ocean so it needs like a specific horizon line as it were just keep moving some of these last bits any sort of odd lines like this line here for example I'm just going to work it over slightly just to blend it in a little bit more but you want to have those white areas that's where the snow peak mountains are going to be all right so we'll just flip it over it's a lot easier to do the reflection if you're working the right way up as it were. It doesn't have to be exact with this, you're just giving a rough idea of where the reflected mountain is going to be. And again just keeping the excess paint off the palette knife. Now the key with the reflection, we don't want it to be quite as harsh. So 
you know, obviously the paint has started to dry a little bit more, so it is important that you start with the main feature mounting. So you'll find that this reflection side is going to be a little bit bluer, but that's what we want. We want the bluer, almost reflective quality to it. And in a moment, I actually want to make sure that when I'm removing the paint, I'm doing it in more of a, a sort of linear fashion. So here, for example, you know, we, we want to be working across the canvas to give that sense of the reflective water. Just exaggerate some of those linear lines. And then we flick it back over. Now you could leave it like that. It's pretty much you know, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just going to add a little bit more definition. So I've just put a hint of blue onto the palette knife. Again, you don't have to do this. I'm being a bit of a, uh, a bit of a perfectionist now, but I'm just just want to give it a little bit more definition to the mountain range. I'm just exaggerating some of those darker blue areas. You can almost imagine where the sun's reflecting off the snow, and you're going to get those sort of shaded, rocky areas just behind just gives it a lovely textural contrast. Just do a few finishing touches and there you have it. Possibly the easiest mountain range to do. So there you have it guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video on how to produce a really simple but such an effective mountain scene. I hope you agree that it's a really realistic technique and it's so so simple, anybody can do this. If you're new to this channel guys then please do hit that subscription button just below because we do do weekly top tips just like this one to really help people, not just beginners but people to try and really build up their confidence in art and design and also to give you some new ideas about how to do paintings just like this one. If you have enjoyed the video, then please do hit that like button just below, guys, as it really does help our channel. And if you'd like to see those weekly top tips, then make sure you hit that subscription button and that notification bell just below so that you know when our videos are coming back up. We do weekly videos every Wednesday and Saturday, so look out for us when we come back. Alrighty, guys, we'll see you next time. Happy painting.